So good morning everyone, Carlos here, just uh, starting off another run on, in the forest. Today is pretty drippy as you can see, you'll hear the rain under my feet as I run on these sloppy wood chip and leaf trails. I'm going to take you up to the summit via Harrop Trail, but uh, I'm not sure how long it'll be before the camera gets a raindrop on the middle, in the middle of the lens. But the audio will still be worth the effort. I don't have my voice recorder with me today, so I have to kind of rely on the phone and the chest mount. I'm hoping that when I get into the forest a little more, that I will be sheltered under the canopy from the rain. Let me just check that I'm still rolling. Yep, just coming up to 1 minute 40. That's good. Got to keep the camera pointing up a little more. The closer it is to my chest, the less it bounces. When it flips forward, it kind of pulls more on the harness. So pretty soon I have to look out for a trail to the left, which will take me up, 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 all the way to the summit of Mount Doug. Today's trail is going to be called Harrop Trail going up. But at the moment, I'm on Whitaker Trail, going down. Excuse me. This is where I make my turn. Well, no, it's a little further. Mind you, that probably would have worked. Yep. Three minutes done. 34 seconds ahead of a nine minute pace. Now you'll be relieved to know that it won't be bouncing nearly as much because when I hike, it doesn't jump so much on my chest. Could have gone that way, but uh, I'll go this way. It's slightly easier to go around this log than to go over it. Arab Trail is one of the steeper trails on this particular ascent. It's a nice looking fungus there. I hope you can see that. It looks a little bit damaged, but they're such weird shapes, some of those funguses. It's hard to tell if it's damage or the natural formation. I will run when I can. This is my first run of the week. I've been working for the last two days. Yep, everything seems to be working fine for the moment. See, this would have been another of the trails coming up. They all branch, but they all join closer to the top. My first major crossing is coming up soon when I'll be crossing Norn Trail.
just after this log here. This is Nolan Trail intersection as they continue to climb. It's getting really busy at work today. Not today, but this time of the year because a lot of office parties are beginning to happen. Lots of hot food going out. And when there's hot food, there's lots of dirty cookware that needs to be put through the machine and stacked back for when it's needed again. I have probably cleaned everything in the place by now a few times because what happens is you rotate the stuff back the bowls, the stainless steel containers, all that kind of stuff. And when they want another piece, they go and grab it off the top. So if you're on top of the game, you're washing just the top few items over and over again. But when you get to the rack and there are no bowls, or you when you go for a chopping board, there are no chopping boards. They're all waiting to be washed and returned. That's when you know that you're busy. And a couple of times over the last two days, the chefs have had to come and ask me for a board. Nothing gets really spotlessly clean because it all gets sanitized in the machine but you know what I mean a mixing bowl can be reused as long as it's not going to contaminate the next stuff that you're mixing like you couldn't use a bowl that you'd use for curry to whip cream. But uh, the sanitizing machine deals with that. The other problem with a busy kitchen is that you don't have an endless supply of hot water if you're not careful with your water use then this everything gets a cool rinse rather than a sanitizing wash so that's another thing you have to stay on top of not wasting the water as I climb still ever upward but of all the kitchens I've worked in including my own this one is probably the cleanest which is nice to know partly due to the diligent work of Rob and yours truly when Rob is on his days off I've just been told that I'm 33 seconds behind a predetermined nine minute pace, which isn't bad considering I'm two thirds of the way up this climb. As you can see from the drip drippy video, there's still a fair bit more climbing to do. So for the last five minutes I have been hiking steadily upward. Pretty soon I'll be popping out onto the South Ridge Trail. 
this isn't the very top of Harrop. It is close to the top of Harrop, but Harrop does not go all the way to the top of Mount Doug. It skirts to the side quite soon. So to get to the very top, you have to go up the South Ridge Trail after Harrop. All right. There's no break for me today. It's continuous effort all the way up. Now I'm a minute and a half behind my nine minute pace as I reach the top of Irvine. There is a signpost up ahead, which is the high point on Irvine. To go up any higher than here, I have to go via the uh, Southridge trail. So this is the high spot on Harrop and the Southridge trail becomes a black diamond trail for hikers which means that basically it's too steep to run unless you happen to be a mountain goat. I've been listening to Martha's excellent podcast. She talked about the big money that is spoiling the ultra running community. The ultra marathons of Mont Blanc, UMB people are muscling in on new territory for their money-making ventures, which can only mean that it's going to cost way more to enter the races. Two and a half minutes behind the pace, average heart rate 126, which is zone two, top end of zone two, and I'm hiking. That's what I mean. The heart doesn't really know what you're doing. All it knows is how hard it is to do it. As I start reaching for handholds, there won't be much of a view today because of the sea fog. It's more than sea fog, actually. But what I want you to see today is the rugged nature of some of the trail running that I do and how my often remarked comment of trying to stay vertical makes a little more sense as you look down onto my neighborhood at the 15 minute mark of this exciting episode Harrop going up is the name 
of the game. The good thing about the chest camera is that my hands are free to gra grab if I need to grab anything. Almost four minutes behind my nine minute pace at around the four kilometer mark, which basically means I've dropped to 10 minute pace. As I pick my way over the slippery, wet terrain, looking for the safest route to the top. I can already see the antenna poking up over the trees. This trail is a creek at the moment, just a tiny little creek. That is quite often the best indicator of the lowest possible route. Water tends to follow the lowest possible route as I cautiously work my way up this rock face. You should be able to see the antenna poking up above the tree line. See what I mean about the water running down the trail? Miraculously, my socks are still dry. But tomorrow, I will be almost obliged to do a road run because these shoes will be wet by the time I get home. South Ridge to Summit. This is the branch that I'm on. Get to do some more running now. Yep, I think it's going to be an unavoidable wet shoe situation very soon. My right shoe is beginning to feel a little bit of seepage. They're pretty good, these shoes. They're the Nike Trail Zoom, the khaki version. Is that a potato? Or is that a rock? It's a rock. Yep, a rock. Looks like a little nugget potato. I have the camera tilted down so you can see the shoes that I'm talking about. The Nike Trail zoom. It's about as close as I get to a product placement ad for Nike. I get a lot of flack from people saying, what shoes do you run in and whether they think the Ultras are better than the Hulkers, but Basically, if they're the right size, all the shoes are good. It's quite often the problem with the buyer and not the shoe. You buy your shoes when your feet are at their least swollen. And I don't know about you, but women tend to like buying tight Shoes. Little shoes, the same size as their regular 
shoes, the shoes they wear for the office or for the shop or whatever they do, which is probably not the best plan because when you run, your feet tend to swell and then you have problems with shoes that don't fit anymore. All right, so this is indeed the summit antenna. There are two peaks on Mount Douglas. I'm just going to go out over to the lookout peak on the adjoining point of land across the upper parking lot. I'm not sure what these trucks are doing up here, but they obviously have access because there is no access to this area during the daytime, not until after 12. So they must be doing some kind of work up here. There is a Saanich truck and Saanich is the municipality that owns this area. I mean, we own the area as ratepayers, but Saanich controls it for us. Oh, I just realized right now that I've been recording from my earbuds. Hopefully the quality has been good enough to keep. Last time I did this, I used the built-in microphones on the phone. Hi. Today, I'm using the earbuds. I'm listening to Samantha through my earbuds. When I get to the summit, I will call it a day for this episode. Harrop going up. And uh, concentrate on staying vertical as I descend. I should burn about 500 calories on this run today, which will put me in good stead for my 700 calorie target for today. I have been doing my race walking on the work days. I, I get up at I get up at uh, six o'clock in the morning. I do my chores around the house, light the fire, have my breakfast, and then I head out the door on my e-bike for a 10 kilometer ride to Little Piggy's Catering, where I am part-time employee. This is the second session that I've done with them. The last guy they had quit. So Rob reached out to me to ask me if I could cover for his days off which I was only too glad to do as I pan around a little bit here, trying not to get too much into the rain. I will say goodbye to you at 24 minutes in to this run. Well, 24 minutes in to this recording. Hello. Hello. Yep. I still haven't tried running with an umbrella. That would be quite difficult to do. Mind you, there are times when the wind is behind you that running with an umbrella wouldn't be such a bad idea. As long as you weren't trying to record a podcast and film a video all at the same time and remain vertical. So as I head towards my 
exit. I will bid you adieu from the top of Mount Douglas here in beautiful, drippy Victoria. Bye-bye.